On the Radio is brought to you by Zurich Insurance, the perfect place to catch up with all things Melbourne. If you enjoy this content and want more inside access from the team, make sure you visit the club website. It was a signature victory. Jason Bennett calling on Channel 7 there. It was a hell of a good performance and it was a terrific game. It might be the best of the AFLW era. There's no one better qualified than Mick Stanier who's seen it all as Melbourne's AFLW coach. Mick, welcome back to the program. Thanks, Jared. Thanks for having us. Was it as good as there's been, do you think? Um, oh, I think it would yeah, definitely be up there uh, from a um, entertainment point of view, a, a close finish, and then from a skill execution and scoring, yeah, no doubt, I think it's it's right up there. What does it give you to work with? What do you take out of a night like that? Yeah, I, I think our group gets a lot of belief. Uh, pleasingly for us, it was a level of effort across four quarters. We're a little bit wasteful forward of the centre early, and then the second quarter was obviously a good quarter for us, but third quarter, North pressure got the better of us. We were still... We were still cracking in and, and winning the ball, but um, we were coughing it up a little too easy. And then we thought the last quarter, while we didn't score uh, as much as we would have liked, we, we spent large amounts of time in our in our forward half and sort of controlled that quarter. So, yeah, I, I think the group definitely gets a lot of belief and um, hopefully that's something we can continue to build on. You've, I will say Melbourne has never had much luck in all of this. It does feel to me like in every season that you've played, you've had one of these moments where you've made everyone sit up and go, ah, maybe, maybe they're the team. Does, does that give you the evidence that, you are, that you're right in the premiership race? Yeah, I, I think and that's fair criticism. We've, we've had some really good moments throughout the four, four seasons previously, and then we've had some, some moments where we've let ourselves and our supporters down with, you know, games that we should have been able to, to find a way to win. So I think that's been something we've been working on, particularly last year and this year, is, is trying to become a great team and, and be consistent at executing the little things. And, yeah, I think hopefully, you know, the first three rounds, we've, we've continued to improve each week. Uh, hopefully the group is now getting that belief that, you know, we can perform consistently week to week and, and be right there at the end of the season. As a coach, how do you define the improvement that not only you see, but the improvement that you get to work with year on year across the, the women's game? Yeah, I think probably just this season, it's a more of a gut feeling now, just being on the training track with the girls, um, watching them, how they go about their business. But I'm in a position now where I'm in awe of, of some of our athletes and some of the skill level and... Um, and you just get pure enjoyment from watching them play. And I think when we first started, it was you know right right down to the basics and teaching ground ball technique and um, kicking you know, technique and just the real fundamentals of the game, which we obviously still coach and teach now. But where the girls have got to with their actual skill execution, plus complement that with four or five years of strength work in the gym, um, improving their running capacity. Um, and just physically, uh, you know, that athletic appearance they have now, um, yeah, it is quite remarkable. And it's off the back of a lot of hard work and not just our girls, but the girls across the competition. But, yeah, I, I certainly sit back and just really get to enjoy um, what they can produce on game day. So do you have a, a clear idea in your mind of what that leads to across the next five years, across the next generation? Yeah, I, I think it's, yeah, a, a huge improvement in skill execution. I think what we've seen in the first few years is um, every team has, has been able to provide that defensive pressure and intensity around the ball, but the skill, you know, the contest work and taking the ball cleanly and being able to exit those contest areas, that's the part that's taken a little bit longer. But now as we see players get stronger, um, mentally they get better at dealing with the pressure and then the actual technical component of executing skills under pressure that's now starting to improve. So we're seeing more scoring chains, um, yeah, less turnovers, and that's making for a, a greater spectacle. And, and obviously, it's um, yeah, it's enjoyable to coach. It's a great spectacle in, a, in what's becoming an increasingly challenging year. It feels to me like the fixturing of this is happening in an ever-constricting circle. Um, so you'll play next Sunday the Bulldogs at Witten Oval. How, how complex is all of this becoming with with border closures and a redrafted fixture essentially every week at the moment? Oh, yeah. Thankfully, we're not involved in the fixturing, but, yeah, I imagine um, that it'd be very difficult 
in town at AFL House trying to coordinate and navigate all that. I think for us, it's I guess it's a time we live in at the moment. You can never think too far ahead. So the one week at a time is, is going OK at the moment. We haven't had too many late changes with our fixturing as some teams have had. But, yeah, I think the message is just continues to be just focus on what we can control. And when we get notified, then we, we start preparing accordingly. But, yeah, I think in previous years, we've, everyone in footy always says just one week at a time. But um, I think this is the season where it's actually more relevant than ever. So it's... Um, yeah, it just helps you not not to think too far ahead and, and just maximise the opportunity and enjoy the moment that you're in each time. There are real-life competitive tensions here around sort of juggling work and juggling home and then trying to find the right place for footy, given that we're not talking professional athletes at the moment. How, how real are those tensions? Yeah, I, I think um, the AFL and AFLPA have been very good at, I guess, giving players advance notice and talking to employers about potentials and um, yeah, I think the challenge for us is you know, players not to worry about what could be, um, prepare for it but then move on and focus on what's important but yeah, I, I think up until now we've been able to avoid you know, clubs going into a hub or some form of hub but if, if that is required I, I think the players across the competition are, are prepared for that um, but it does just add an extra layer of pressure particularly for um, like Daisy, for example, with with a young family or players that have got really important work that they can't escape, so it will impact people if it if it happens. But we're sort of optimistic that we'll be able to keep getting through week to week the way we are at the moment. Is the concept of hubs just impractical for for the scenario of of the players? No, no, I think I think it is it is practical. I think the I guess the word hub will be different or the the look would be different to the men's competition. You know, it wouldn't be for the remainder of the season. You know, it might be a couple of teams for, you know, two-week period or that's that's my thoughts anyway. I, yep. I don't see it being a, um, a whole-scale thing. So um, it's just because each state is functioning so differently at the moment. Yeah. So you know, I think there's still some clever options we can use without throwing everyone out, But um, which I think makes it more feasible if, you know, a, a team or multiple teams just had to go interstate for a two-week period to play three games, um, that could be a really good fit and certainly manageable from our staff and playing group. Yeah, so you feel like you'd be able to take, if not the entire team, then certainly a critical mass for a couple of weeks to ping off three games if necessary? Yeah, yeah. And the AFL has been good at, I guess, canvassing, you know, how, how we'd be placed with staff and players if, if that was required. So, no, yeah, I agree with that. We, we would be OK to still field a really strong team and, and be well supported with our staff. So round four has all the Victorian teams against each other. Um, it, could there be, I mean, you sort of run out of options eventually. How many more weeks of that do you think would be feasible before um, uh, the travel became the reality? Yeah, I, I think it might well be round four, potentially round five. We could we could get away with it. And then, then we, we definitely need to look at, um, at that crossover and, and so we can still make it a genuine competition. So I, I think... Yeah, the fixturing has done a great job um, up until this point, and then hopefully things can slowly start to open up as this latest outbreak gets under control. I guess that's the optimistic way of thinking, but that's, yeah. that's sort of all we can deal with at the moment. But, um, yeah, no, I think there's another round of, of good clashes this week, and um, I think each week the sort of competition takes shape. Um, so that's, yeah, it's exciting. So what's... What is your fit? So you're you're unbeaten. You're in the mix at the top. North Melbourne were thought to be the testing material. Fremantle are long term unbeaten. Are, are they the team to beat? Yeah, I think Trent Cooper and uh, the girls have, have just been super consistent. They their ability to take the ball forward, their scoring power ahead of the ball, um, and they're they're standing up defensively. So they've been really consistent with the way they've been playing and the way they've been executing. So I think I think they would be the benchmark at the moment. Um, North, obviously, just an incredibly powerful midfield and good scoring power. So they're, they're going to be right up there again. Uh, and then we're seeing teams like Collingwood start to emerge. And I think Carlton, I think half will get Carlton up and going and we'll see much more improved output from them in the coming weeks as well. Mick, great to get your insights. Good luck for whatever shape it takes. It was terrific on Saturday night. Thanks, Jared. Thanks for having us.